We now go across to Eric Mackey for a look at your weather forecast. Eric. Thank you, Charlene. We saw a lot of sunshine again today, and then they had those showers this afternoon. Not, uh, not too bad. Uh, one or two isolated showers along the uh, western coastline of Trinidad, and maybe one or two elsewhere as well. But we're still seeing a fair amount of dry air out to the east of uh, Trinidad. Uh, so again, tomorrow it looks like we're going to have some sunshine in the morning. We'll look out for those showers in the afternoon. They're still forecasting the chance of a heavy shower or thunderstorm that may produce some drenching rainfall and maybe some gusty winds. So look out for that, particularly along the west coast tomorrow afternoon. Got two tropical waves. One has gone by already. Another one out in the east of us here. That's uh, still a couple of days away and is stimulating some activity in the intertropical convergence zone. So as it gets closer, we will likely see some activity off of that. That looks like uh, Thursday into Friday's weather. <clears throat> and tropical storm Nadine still in the picture, but not there for much longer. Nadine is getting out of the picture, as you can see at this point in time. It's going towards the Azores and may produce some tropical storm conditions there in a day or two. The wind's going to be light again tomorrow, 5 to 10 knots, gusting up to about 18, and a somewhat variable um, you're going to find it's going to be calm at times. Uh, sometimes it'll be out to the southwest, the northeast, just like it was today. It was all around the clock and all less than 10 knots. So look out for that uh, happening again. And that's one of the things that could possibly cause a, th a severe thunderstorm activity to happen along the western coastline areas and in the Gulf of Paria itself. Seas so going to be around 1 to 1.5 meters or 9 to 10 seconds in 12 between the soils. Now, it's out of a east northeast to northeasterly direction. It should stay like that for tomorrow, but by the following day, it should come back around into a more east northeasterly direction. The Gulf of Paris seas will remain below 1 meter. Trinidad out tonight's going to be mostly fair. Tonight's so going to be 24 degrees. Tomorrow, we're looking at mostly sunny conditions at first, but as it, the day progresses and you get the daytime heating, you get those uh, convective uh, currents going. You got some moisture in there and you're looking for showers and isolated thunderstorm activity in the afternoon. Tomorrow's high forecast will be 34 degrees. Across in Tobago tonight, generally fair and a low of 24. Tobago tomorrow mostly sunny and a high of 31. Sun's going to rise at 5.55 a.m. and sets at 6.03 p.m. First high tide for Port of Spain will be at 6.08 a.m. and for Scarborough 5.33. First low tide 11.53 a.m. for Port of Spain and 11.33 for Scarborough. And that's my weather report for now. We'll have a short break and when we come back, show you have some more news here.
passionate show where the stars of Dancing with the Stars, American Idol, and So You Think You Can Dance come together for an evening of exciting entertainment unlike anything you've ever witnessed before. On Saturday, September 29th, experience this amazing show right before your eyes in an exciting production entitled Ballroom with a Twist. See the stars of Dancing with the Stars, American Idol, and So You Think You Can Dance on stage singing and dancing under the lights in a two-hour choreographed production that'll leave you breathless. This world-class production is sold out all over the world, and on Saturday, September 29th, you can see it too. Live at the Center of Excellence. See newspapers for details. Just tell us your budget and we'll find the right fit. We are innovation ahead of the game. Go for the book, Lifetime Solutions. You can trust the roof to us, Lifetime Solutions. <coughs> When the flu strikes, it never comes in the same way. If you have a bad flu with cough, there's a suitable Panadol. Panadol multi-symptom. A court has banned a French magazine from republishing or distributing photographs in France of the Duchess of Cambridge sunbathing topless. The royal couple's injunction against publishers of Closer magazine was granted after the photos were published on Friday. They certainly didn't look like a couple awaiting an important court judgment. As magistrates in Paris finalised their ruling, William and Kate were relaxing on the final night of their tour on the tiny South Pacific islands of Tuvalu. And after a difficult few days during which they felt deeply affronted at the invasion of their privacy, they were about to have something important to celebrate. In Paris, lawyers acting on behalf of William and Kate had received the judgment. It's a good result, said one of them. Under the terms of the injunction, future publication and resale of the photographs is banned. There'll be a 10,000 euro, that's about 8,000 pound fine, for each breach of the injunction. All photos are to be handed over within 24 hours. There'll be a 10,000 euro fine for each day of delay. In Tuvalu, William and Kate left the dinner to study the French judgment with their advisers. In a short statement, St. James's Palace said simply that they welcomed the court's decision. We now take a short break. Stay with us. Enjoy the new look and send great taste today. Jensinger, up the root of all power. Get the news first. Read the Guardian newspaper anytime, anywhere, online. Take advantage of our special introductory offer of just $4.99 US per month and receive daily a digital replication of the printed newspapers as seen on newsstands. It's convenient and environmentally friendly. Act now. Log on to www.guardian.co.tt to sign up today. Get the Guardian e-edition now. We give you the power in your hands. Welcome back. Villagers of Mont Lacroix Blanchichers were cut off from the rest of the country for over 24 hours after rains caused landslides that blocked their roads. But the villagers say the landslide was man made. Cameraman Vern Tikasing and reporter Otto Carrington went Mont Lacroix and filed this report. Earlier this year, the villagers of Mont Lacroix village at Blanchichers were cut off from the rest of the country after heavy rains caused the roadway to break. On Tuesday, villagers were faced with the same problem again. The first landslip was repaired and the road made passable, but residents say the work which was done has created more havoc in the community. As slush and debris over two feet high came down on another part of the roadway, blocking access to the village. Many children were unable to go to school and only trucks were able to pass. What we had to do is we had to come up here and you had to actually tote your children across the road. So, and this morning, none of the children, well, as I could see, can't attend school because the maxi can't even pass here to take them to school. Residents say the landslips occurred overnight. By Tuesday morning, cleanup crews from the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure were on the scene trying to make the roadway possible. 
Ms. Conte blames contractors for their problems. The contractors where the road broke away last year, where the road eroded, right, last year. Um, well, that is the cause because they took all the stuff, all the mud, all the dirt, everything, and they dump it into this guy's land right here, as you could see. This pensioner complained about the lack of representation. We have a councillor, we never see him. Area representative, disaster here, you don't come and, come, come, come and find out what's really going on in the area and think, are we suffering here? Just after midday, work crews from the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure had cleared the Mont Lacroix roadway, making it possible once again. I am Otto Carrington reporting for CNC3 News. No murders in Lavin till in nine days. The National Security Minister says the anti-crime initiatives are working. Two weekends ago, four murders rocked the Beverly Hills community in Laventil in less than 48 hours. And this prompted National Security Minister Jack Warner to send in the army to appease the situation. Gang warfare was identified as the main cause for the speed of murders. But following a town meeting in John John last week where residents called for peace, Minister Warner is now boasting of a remarkable improvement. He says the last murder was recorded on September 9th. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 9 days. Nine days, not a murder in Laventil. Besides the national security agencies, Minister Warner pays tribute to Laventil residents for the positive statistics. Joy here, boo. But have one tomorrow. Front page. Laventil under, uh, under threat. Fire and brimstone. Run and son. Minister Warner was speaking at the launch of the Gonzales Joint Community Service Center. The center would be used as a police post and the place where many social services can be accessed by the residents. He is optimistic that the new facility will help improve the lives of residents and also reduce crime. One resident, Stephen Ned, said the opening of the center is a welcome development. I need this. I'm well proud, Well proud. The Ministry of National Security is promising to construct 22 more facilities in communities across the country. I am Chester Sambrano, reporting for CNC3 News. There may be shortages of meat over the Christmas holidays. We have more on this report. It's less than 100 days to Christmas and already there's a warning from the largest food import in the country, Arima Discount Mart, that there may be a shortage of beef and goat for the festive season. Owner of ADM, Bali Ramarad, says large international countries are consuming more and there is high competition to get food on the international markets. I'm struggling to get some goat for the Christmas season. And the fluctuation between these items is between... 10 or 15 percent. Mr. Maraj believes that locally more emphasis needs to be placed on producing the products that we consume. And if land is an issue, he believes that government can enter into memorandums of understanding with other countries. If we don't do the things, what I'm saying, as China is now going to Africa, buying up millions of acres of land, a lot of them is doing it because they think 50 years down the road. And we have golden opportunity here. If we don't do joint ventures with items we grow, with MOUs, government to government. Meantime, the former head of the supermarket association believes that the time has come for the port of Port of Spain to be open seven days a week to remove the annual backlog during the holiday season. As to the upcoming 2012-2013 budget, he says he has high expectations. Simplify a budget, especially with Mr. Larry. Minister Larry, who I came from the bowels of the business, he knows how it feels to be. In. He, he knows the pains and the cancerous part that people face. I am Otto Carrington reporting for CNC3 News. As we go, let's bring you the final results of tonight's Your Vote. The question you voted on tonight was... Do you believe the massive turnout at the March Against Injustice is indicative of public disenchantment over the proclamation of Section 34? Well, we're going to bring up the final results for you any time now. 19% of you voted in yes, while 
81% of you voted in no. We do apologize for not being able to bring that graphic up to show you. But again, 19% voted in yes, 81% of you voted in no. Well, that's how we end the 7 o'clock news here on CNC3. Thank you so much for your company. I'm Charlene Ramdani. I'm Samson Anton. And I'm Roger Santon. We do look forward to your company again tomorrow evening starting at 7. Good night.